And on this video, I'll go over the best positions to mount a front-facing dash camera. I'm also gonna go over the advantages and disadvantages of each, and I'm also gonna show you actual footage from the dash cam in those positions, so you can decide which position is gonna work best for you. And the mounting location for the dash cam is gonna be primarily affected by three factors. Let's go over those. The first one is the legal requirements in your state. Certain states have restrictions on where the camera can be placed on your windshield. For example, here in California, we're extremely restricted on what places we can legally place the dash cam at. So the very first step will be to determine what restrictions are in your state, if any, before deciding to place a dash cam in a potential place that may be considered illegal. But if the camera is a dual channel camera that has a front facing camera, but also a cabin camera, then we're going to have to find a location that is going to work best for both cameras, the front camera, but also for the cabin camera so we can capture the interior. But let's focus on the one that is a single facing front camera. And the third thing that is going to influence the decision or where to place the dash cam is whether this dash cam is going to be installed professionally or if it's going to be a do it yourself job. If you're having the dash cam installed professionally, most installers are going to charge a flat fee to install the dash cam regardless of where you want it to be. However, there are some installers that will charge extra if you ask for a specific location that requires the installer to do a little bit more work. And if you are installing the dash cam yourself, you want to take the same consideration. If you choose a location that is going to make the installation very difficult for you, you may want to consider an alternate location that will make the installation easier for you. For example, if we decide to mount this dash cam very high in the windshield, we're going to have an excellent view of the road. However, this now means that I'm going to have to route the power cable from the headliner down to the A pillar, down towards the body of the car, and then towards the panels until I get to the power outlet. And while hiding the cable on the headliner of a vehicle may not be as difficult, once we reach the A pillar of a car, we may potentially have an issue because a lot of vehicles have an airbag in the A pillar. And if we're installing a cable over the airbag, it may create a potentially dangerous situation. Also for the installer to route the cable underneath the airbag, that means we might potentially have to remove panels and be poking around in an area of a live airbag. I have made a separate, very detailed video showing that process and the potential dangers that are involved when routing cables in the A pillar location with an airbag involved. If you wanna see that video, I'll place a link to that in the description down below. So you may consider an alternate position for the dash cam, such as in the lower portion of the windshield, which may not offer you the best potential view of the road, but it's going to make the installation a lot easier because we won't have to worry about routing the power cable all across the headliner, down the A pillar, and down towards the power outlet. So to recap, the best position for the front camera is going to be affected by three factors. First, the legal factor. Is it legal for me to place the dash cam where I want it to be? Second factor, do I have a cabin camera that I have to worry about when placing the dash cam so I can also see the cabin. And the third factor, whether this job is going to be a professionally installed job or whether it's going to be a do-it-yourself job and how difficult I want to make that job for myself. And with that being said, let's take a look at some actual driving footage so we can see six potential positions on a windshield and we can compare them side to side to see which is gonna offer the best potential view of the road. Round one, and here we have the top left against the top center, and we're gonna be inclined to pick the top center right away because we like things that are equal, things that are balanced, and that placement being in the center feels right. However, let's quickly not dismiss the top left because on the top left we can still see see both lanes and a little bit of the posting traffic. However, if the dash cam is up there, it doesn't take that much work to route it to the top center. So I'm going to have to give this one to the top center position. Round two, we have the top center against the top right. And the top right is a very interesting angle because we can see not only both lanes of the road, but we can now see more of the oncoming traffic versus the top center position. However, if you live in Europe where they drive on the other side of the road, you may be better off with the top left position, which will give you a similar advantage. Round three, we have the top left against the top right. And we previously seen the advantage of the top right position, giving us more view of the opposing traffic versus the left side that only gives us more sidewalk. However, again, as I said, if you live in Europe or another place that drives on the other side of the world, top left might be the one that provides more view of the road versus top right where you may end up with more sidewalk if you live in Europe. 
Round four, we have the bottom left against the bottom center. And on the bottom left, we can see both lanes of traffic, but we have a little bit of an obstruction with that Toyota logo on there. And we also have a little bit of an obstruction towards the sidewalk. The bottom center also has a small obstruction with that windshield wiper. However, the bottom center has the advantage that it is the shortest path to the power outlet. So it requires the least amount of routing a cable when installing a dash cam. Round five, we have the bottom center against the bottom right. And both of them have that small obstruction of that windshield wiper. However, we can still see both lanes of traffic. But if I had to pick one, I will pick the bottom center because again, we have the advantage that being in the center, it is the shortest path for the cable that connects to the dash cam to the power outlet. Round six, we have the bottom left against the bottom right. And both of these angles have a small obstruction. Bottom right has a small wiper. Bottom left has a small logo. I would pick the bottom left location. Both of the locations have the advantage that I don't have to mess with the A pillar. I don't have to mess with routing the cable under the headliner. However, you want to check your vehicle to see if there is a logo or windshield wiper that may get in your way of your view and if it will bother you or not. Round seven, we have the top left against the top center against the top right. And all three of these positions require me to route the cable of the A pillar, but the top center view angle additionally requires me to route the cable underneath the headliner. However, it is my top choice because it provides with the most pleasant view. However, my second choice right here will be the top right because of that advantage of being able to see more of the oncoming traffic. Round eight, we have the bottom left against the bottom center against the bottom right. And while these three angles are slightly restricted in terms of their view, they're gonna be the ones that provide the fastest and quickest installation because they do not require me to mess with the A pillar of my vehicle or mess with the headliner of my vehicle. And if I had to pick one out of the three of them, I will pick the bottom left because I can still see the road even with that logo on there. It's so small, it doesn't bother me. Final round, we have the three top positions against the three bottom positions. But I'm gonna to give the top prize to the top center position and the second place is gonna go to the top right view and on third place I'm gonna give that to the bottom left position and as a consolation prize I'm gonna give the bottom center a four place and if you guys want to see any of these angles in full screen make sure you guys stick around till the end of the video where you can see them in full size. But now that you've seen the test drive footage, here are two final recommendations to consider when deciding where to place the front dash cam. The very first one is gonna be the potential for theft. If we decide to install this somewhere where it's really visible, we might be potentially tempting somebody to break into our car to steal our dash cam. And now the dash cam is gonna have the opposite effect. Instead of protecting your car, now it has potentially created an issue of somebody breaking into your car. But one quick solution to this problem will be to look for a dash cam that has a quick disconnect mount so we can remove it when we leave the car and when we come back we can reinstall it back onto the mount itself. I'll put links in the description down below to dash cams that support a quick disconnect mount in case you want to check those out. But the other good alternative solution to this problem would be to consider a dash cam that blends in with the interior of the car, such as LCD mirror dash cams. Most people still cannot spot an LCD mirror dash cam this day, so that's a good a stealthy dash cam. Also consider a stale dash cam, like the Fitcam X stale dash cam. I'll put links to both in the description down below below in case you want to check those out. And the final tip to consider where deciding the location of the front dash cam is going to be to take into consideration if we're going to use a sunshade on our vehicle or not. Some sunshades can conflict with the dash cam location and now we cannot install those on easily or every time we install them we're going to bump into the dash cam and the dash cam is going to move and every time we take them off we're going to have to re-aim the dash cam and make sure it points in the right direction which can potentially be a hassle. So if you are considering using a sunshade along with the dash cam, make sure that the sunshade does not conflict with the dash cam and make sure that the dash cam does not conflict with the sunshade. But I'm also curious to know from you, which was your favorite dash cam position and why? Please let me know down in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.